Okay, VC, part two, 1974. Here we go. Um, one of my favorite bands in the entire earth is the New Riders of the Purple Sage, named after Riders of the Purple Sage by Zane Gray, which I've never read, a cowboy. This one's produced by Jerry Garcia. This was their Home Home on the Road live album, 1974, after the success of the Panama Red album. And uh, in 72, uh, and had She's No Angel, Groupie, Kick in the Head from that album. Truck Driving Man, a cover of Dead Flowers by The Stones. Henry from the first album. Hello, Mary Lou from the second album. Sutter's Mill from Gypsy Cowboy, the third album. Fourth album, I guess, and Andy Stein from Commander Cody's on it. The whole band's on here. Spencer Dryden from The Airplane on Drums. Dave Nelson. Buddy Cage with a Grateful Dead t-shirt there. I think you can see him there. Great picture. Dawson there doing his... Uh, Bess Jagger, Swagger, and Nelson on guitar. Garcia's old buddy, Dave Torbert on the bass. Great new, new Riders uh, logo there. On Columbia, Clive Davis snagged them because he wanted to get the dead. That's the story. And uh, they were a great band, especially when the dead went on hiatus in 74. We, we saw the Riders a lot. Um, there's the red Columbia label, so... That's the, uh, I wonder if Owsley made that little thing because Owsley was known to make uh, belt buckles and those that kind of jewelry type uh, a thing. You know, my wife makes jewelry. If you ever uh, need jewelry, look, check out uh, Sandy Daly 68 at uh, Origami Owl. She is uh, terrific at that. And I want to shout out to uh, my daughter, Sherry, and her husband, Sean, and my grandson, Phoenix, out in L.A. I got my Phoenix shirt on for them. So here is Bonnie Raitt coming in, 74. Really great album. That's a picture of her. I believe that's on, I know right where that is, on the Upper West Side on uh, Broadway um, in the West uh, 70s with a bunch of her uh, buddies. Bonnie. Oh. And she's got James Taylor's Rainy Day Man on here. And we were talking in the in the video before about covers. A lot of covers on here. Alan Toussaint's What is Success? Great version of that. Um, uh, Everything That Touches You, Michael Kamen. This is a terrific, terrific album. This this might be my favorite Bonnie Raitt album. It was it was one of my first, I think it was my first Bonnie Raitt album. Um I love recorded the hit factory. Um, I had a lot of Steve Gadd on drums, her Freebo, her famous bass player. Um, just great, great. Angel from Montgomery is on this, which was a big, big, big hit for her. That was the big hit from this. Um, check it. Ain't nobody home. It's very funky. It's very kind of like, um, uh, like New Orleans-y, uh, funky, funky, dirty that way, like in a good way. <laughs> Bonnie, getting down. Okay. Uh, don't have a lot of jazz in here, but I wanted to throw this in here. The wonderful, magnificent Billy Cobham that I had seen, and I'll do a concert thing. I went to see Hot Tuna for the first time in 73, the year before this. Billy Cobham was the warm-up band. Uh, believe it or not, with Hot Tuna, kind of like uh, Bill Graham. And he was fantastic. And he was touring this album, Crosswind. It was fantastic. John Abercrombie, George Duke on keyboards, um, bass player. Who do you have on bass on this album? You had the Brecker Brothers. Um, I don't know if they were all at the concert. Michael Brecker. Who was the interest electric basses, John Williams, acoustic and electric basses. But this is phenomenal. It all takes place on a storm. It's on Atlantic. Um, Amit Erdogan, the great Amit Erdogan. Um, 
Atlantic, 1974. If you like um, jazz and you like progressive drumming, uh, kind of almost American prog, I would say, uh, pick this up. It's fantastic, fantastic album. Probably my favorite. I know Spectrum gets a lot of love. This is probably my favorite Billy Cobham album, uh, Crosswinds. A perennial favorite, Mr. Waits, dropped uh, Heart of Saturday Night, which I just read. The Heart of Saturday Night was dedicated to Jack Kerouac, who's one of my favorites, everybody knows. My affinity for Neil Cassidy, Grateful Dead, uh, Jack Kerouac on the road, 1957, when I was born, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, this is a great album. Um, everything on here is great. Shiver Me Timbers, New Coat of Paint, um, Ghosts of Saturday Night, Fumbling with the Blues, um, Drunk on the Moon. It's fantastic. He's got um, is this. I've got two. Um, Tom Waits, and this is on Asylum Division of uh, Warner Communications. Wow, did, did Asylum like own the record business in 1974 or what? How many of these albums that I have were, were Asylum records? And even Linda, who was on Capitol, uh, Linda Runstadt, was going to Asylum. Um doesn't list the sidemen on this, but I believe there's a bunch of jazz side guys on this. Oh, check out the back, because it's got great black and white pics of uh, weights, I believe in New York, like, uh, you know, a newsstand there, like at 3 a.m. Terrific album, Heart of Saturday Night. Check it out, you won't be disappointed. Moving up to Minnesota from New York area, uh, we get Leo Kaki. Uh, with a band singing and writing on this one, 1974, with um, really nice production out of Tacoma uh, Productions, but uh, recorded, mixed, and mastered in his home of Minneapolis. Uh, fantastic. Pamela Brown. I uh, listened to the first side of this today. It's fantastic. Ice water on the Capitol, the Red Capitol. Um, any Leo Kaki you can get. Um, I saw somebody had Chewing Pine in the VC. Uh, I have Dreams and Other Stuff. And uh, what's the other one? I have Dreams and Other Stuff. I can't think of it right now. You can see it. And I just picked this one up. Love Leo Kaki. I have a um, kind of greatest hits on CD. He's, he's just fantastic. Vaseline Machine Gun. I would love to find a 6 and 12 string. Um, one of his first albums. Going across the pond now, we'll go with um, Skating Away on the Thin Ice of a New Day, uh, talking about Prague, uh, one of the inventors of Prague, of course, and blues and everything else invented Ian Anderson and Jethro Tull. This was War Child. Now, I didn't really pay this album a lot of mind, uh, I have to say, or the songs on it, um, <laughs> Skating Away and Bungle in the Jungle are, <laughs> it's like he did a prog album and put two hits on it. Like, that's all I can say. Listen to it. Martin Barr, Jeffrey Hammond, Barrymore Barlow, they're playing on it is phenomenal. Phenomenal. Great, great, great album. All composed, of course, by Ian and the back of the album, what does that album think of? Think of What does everybody say? Put it in the chat before I say it. You know what? I'm not going to answer. I'll put it on my next video. So the back of War Child, what album does that make you think of? Because immediately I got it. It's, it's a very famous album. It had come out. Uh, it was released, I believe, the year before. It was, I'll give you a big hint. It was recorded in 67, but not released until 73. There's a big hint. And we're actually going to see uh, an album by the two artists uh, coming up. <laughs> so those two huge hints. All right. War Child, great album on Chrysalis, Green Chrysalis label. I'm trying to go through this quickly because I know we got a lot of, a 
a lot of vinyl to go through here. Pretty clean copy, too. I was happy about that. Very nice. Um, let me make a little commercial here for my uh, friend Steve, who gave me a big uh, vinyl haul. Thank you, Steve. He's moving. So shout out to him. Now that's one. Number two is my beloved Marquee Records. Thank you. Part of the Tarrytown Music Hall. Go see live music at the Tarrytown Music Hall. And shout out to Randy and company um, and everybody at uh, Marquee uh, Records. And also uh, Johnny's up in Darien. I went there for the first time in Connecticut. Uh, went to another state. Uh, it's the first time I've been out of state in a record shop in a while. Yeah, I haven't done that in a while. I'm sure I've done it in my lifetime. Well, I bought tons of these records, came from Chicago when I lived there. Okay, so those three people, thumbs up. And uh, shout out to my son, Dylan, who's got Carousel tonight. Uh, break a leg, buddy. Um, it's really, really good. Carousel, I have... Uh, it's, it's in here. I got that on vinyl. All right. Moving back to the vinyls, 1974. Stay focused, Dave. Loggins and Messina on stage. Uh, I have two. Uh, I'm getting all the Loggins and Messina because I just love Loggins and Messina. They don't get a lot of love. They don't have high, high prices on Discogs. They're not, you know, the faves, you know, the thrillers, the rumors, the dark side of the moons. But they have terrific songwriting, terrific harmonies, terrific backup band. They're very, very tight. Um, they're great in the studio and they're great live. And I've seen them live. I caught them a couple years ago at the beach. Poco was an opening act and I was late for Poco. I was really sad about that because Jimmy with Jimmy Messina. Anyway, House of Pooh Corner, he kind of does opens up with an acoustic thing. And, um, of course, Kenny's got such a great voice. Uh, Golden Ribbons, really nice jam and angry eyes. Vahiva La takes up all of side three from the Sitting In album. Uh, Back to Georgia, that's probably, the side four is probably my favorite. Back to Georgia, Loving Me. The trilogy, I love the trilogy from the, the first album. The first album, is, to me, is is uh, the money shot on that. So so this is, this is a good one. On stage, it's on uh, CBS. Um... I guess Columbia, yeah, CBS was Columbia back then. Nice shots of the band, uh, Al Garth and uh, uh, who are the other guys in the band? In the Loggins and Messina band. Um, Jimmy, of course, played that Telecaster and did the harmonies and lead. And um, uh, Kenny didn't play much guitar, Most, mostly sang. Uh, some acoustic guitar, but the backup, his the backup band, uh, Larry Sims, Al Garth, Meryl Briganti, John Clark on reeds, Briganti on drums, just fantastic, fantastic. I wanted to mention all of them. I love that band. I just got full sale and I have Mother Load. Um, big, big, big Loggins and Messina fan. Um, yeah, I'm I'm a yacht rocker. I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a joker, I'm a smoker, I'm a yacht rocker. Getting into some live stuff. Now, this is this is an interesting album, Marshall Tucker. Um, I remember hearing an interview with Greg Allman, and he's very big on Toy Caldwell, who was the leader of the Marshall Tucker Band. Marshall Tucker Band was sort of the Leonard Skinner Jr., if you don't know him. They were from Spartanburg, South Carolina. Very, very proud, very, very hardworking, kind of in the shadow of Skinner. Um, you know, Skinner was really really edged the almonds out for the top spot. And they sold a lot of records with Sweet Home Alabama, which was a big hit in 74 as well. And I have Gold and Silver. I didn't really have Second Helping, which was their big album this year. Um, but this is a really great album. Um, the studio cut, I love this old cowboy. It's probably my favorite um, Marshall Tucker Uh song and I have a lot of Marshall Tucker and I love Marshall Tucker and I've seen them a bunch of times um and I, I saw them sound check it once in Chicago it was fantastic if I've told these stories before please please uh indulge me um I want to do a quick shout out to uh some of my other folks in the VC I was thinking of my friend Kenny out in uh, uh California he's so great um Dylan down in North Carolina 
shout out to him. Uh, Mazzy up, up in, uh, up in the great state of Washington. Steve up in Vancouver. Um, Mike up in Boston. I mean, so many of you guys, you, you guys are fantastic pumping out the videos. You do such great. Mike at the In Groove, I thought of you when I wore my, my Phoenix shirt. Um, of course, uh, and many, many, many more. Um, so, uh, yeah, thank you all for all you do and, uh, educating me and helping me along the way. And hopefully, uh, I've, uh, helped you guys out too. Hopefully, um, you know, maybe you'll listen to, uh, George McCorkle, uh, singing, what does he sing? He sings something on here. Uh, this is, um, has Charlie Danos that I mentioned in the other video on the live sides, Ramblin', 24 Hours of Time, which I love, and Take the Highway. They were recorded, I believe, up in Minneapolis, so going full circle, and we'll get back to Minneapolis at the Uline Hall, not Minneapolis, I'm sorry, at the Performing Arts Center, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, the Cheese State. Um, guest Fiddle, 24 Hours of Time, uh, Charlie Daniels. Um, but George, yeah, George, George sings on, a, um, a couple songs on the other albums. This one he doesn't sing on, but this is a tight, tight band. They got the reeds. Check it out. I'm moving right along. Maria Muldaur. Now in 1974, um, two of my favorite musicians, well, my, my, my sing, favorite singer at that point, uh, besides Linda Ronstadt was probably Maria Muldaur. And my favorite guitar player was Jerry Garcia. Little did I know. And my probably my favorite songwriter was Bob Dylan. Little did I know that they would all play together. Um, so life can be very strange. Uh, this is a great album, Waitress at the Donut Shop. It was the follow-up to the, um, the Midnight at the Oasis uh, album. Uh where she, she had the big the big hit. Uh, there's a picture of actually with her with John Kahn. I think she dated John Kahn. I don't know if she actually married him, who's a Garcia's longtime bass player. Um, I believe the uh, McGarrigal sisters are on there. It's got a lot of jazz people on here. This is a great, great album. Um, Joe Boyd and Lenny Warrenker, um, this Warner Brothers project, Wendy Waldman, um, It Ain't the Meat, It's the Motion. Check this out. It's a really fun album. I'm a woman, W-O-M-A-N. Um, here she is with um, Paul Butterfield, I believe, down here, live also. And you can see you got the dead wall of sound. So I guess, um, I don't know if she played, she probably played uh, before the dead or the Garcia band played with the wall of sound or something like that. I'll get back to you on that. Try to find out what that was. And there's a trumpet player on here, really famous one. Ray Brown on bass, Paul Humphreys on drum, Bud Shank on alto, Plaz Johnson on tenor, Harry Sweets Edison. There you go. So some really, uh, Alan Toussaint Brickyard Blues. Really, really good stuff on here. Uh, I think you'll like it. Uh, this album gets a lot of love. I got a promo copy of this. I was lucky to pick it up, 74. It's too late to stop now. Van had a lot of success out of Tupelo Honey and uh, Moondance. Toured this, uh, toured, uh, had an incredible um, band back of him. He always has a, an incredible band. Uh, and this, you know, he's an incredible performer. One of those introverts that just like turns it on on stage at the Troubadour, Santa Monica Civic, and the Rainbow Theater. So there's three interesting venues. Um, very interesting set list. Um, St. Dominic's Preview, Gloria, Cypress Avenue, along with Domino. And then um, a lot of like rave up, ain't nothing you can do. I just want to make love to you. I've been working. Uh, really, really good stuff. Um, yeah, live van. Um, too late to stop now. On, uh, this was not on Asylum. This was Warner. Uh, but interesting, Asylum at that point was, was under the Warner. So, 
I'll show you the labels. Really cool. Uh, I got promo promo on this, so lucked out. Totally lucked out on this. It was not a big a big score. You know, nothing planned. It was purely serendipity. Once in a while. Once in a while, you can get shown the light in the strangest of places if you look at it right. Uh, which was from Scarlet Begonias we saw earlier. Now, here's another album. I like featuring albums, the best albums of 1974, that don't get a lot of love. I know I'm over 20 minutes now. This is a terrific album. I listened to the first side today. Walking Man, um, James Taylor, fantastic uh, he's got two songs on here with the backup singers of Paul McCartney, Linda McCartney, and Carly Simon. That should tell you everything. He does um, Chuck Berry's Promised Land. Great, great cover of that. Um, very introspective. He's got the Brecker Brothers and a bunch of other horns on here. Really tight band. Not the section, the guys, he, you know, Waddy Wachtel or um, Leland Sklar and Kunkel and, and Dirge and those guys usually... But um, Rick Murata, Ralph McDonald, really, really tight. Really, really good. Um, check this out. Walking Man on... Uh, he's on Columbia, right? Yeah. Columbia, 1974. He did this early on in, um, in the winter. Warner, nice Warner Brothers labels there with the shield. Pretty, pretty clean copy. Um, all right, I'm coming down to my last three. I love James Taylor. Um, you know, he wrote everything on here. He writes, he plays, he sings. He's touring this summer. Go see him. I would love to go see him. Um, I'm going to see, uh, thanks to my beautiful wife, Sandy. Um, um, I hope the Doobie Brothers and uh, warmed up by Stevie Winwood. So more to follow on that. Very excited about that. Planet Waves. Bob Dylan and the Band, yes. Uh, this is a really cool album. So in 1974, they toured. I did see the tour. I saw two shows on the tour. After the Madison Square Garden tour, it was so good on, you guessed it, David Geffen put the tour together, Asylum. <laughs> Can't get away from it in 74. And they followed it up with the Before the Flood. So they, he got the tour, he got Before the Flood, and he got Planet Waves, an incredible album. Um, by the way, go, talking about Garcia and his covers, his cover of, um, not Hazel, um, Tough Mama, great, great cover from this. Uh, Forever Young, both the slow and fast versions, all the band hitting on all cylinders, everything on here is good. Not on a night like this, you angel, you. Hazel, up tempos, down tempos, acoustic, rockers, it's got it all. Gordon Lightfoot, there's going up to Canada. Shout out to Steve and my Canadian buddies. Um, great, great Gordon Lightfoot album. Loved Gordon Lightfoot since If You Could Read My Mind. This is the 74 breakout.